is warm. You know, that's what happened in this country. We have four seasons, winter, winter, broil, winter. And now we are in the broil part. <laughs> and, uh, and I get mad because they, they hot, I am from a hot country and that's why there are revolutions in our countries because heat make people mad. Because nobody, if you take all of your clothes, you don't feel better. You, you could be naked and you could still be, be hot, right? But don't do it because they are babies here. Another thing with the heat is the hair. You should have seen how I left my house. I like my long hair and I like it straight because of the double chin. You know what I mean? I use the hair to hide the double chin because I cannot grow a beard. I wish I would be able to grow a beard, not because I want to be a man, which is nothing wrong. I wish, well, I wish I would be a man so I can make the same money that a man makes and to hide my double chin with the beard because, you know, you see a lot of fat people, they have a, they have a chin line. You see very, very, very uh, horizontally challenged men with a line, but I don't, and then my hair goes like this in the summer and it's curly. And a couple of summers ago, I, I decided to save money and I went to have my hair cut to a beauty school. And the voice, the Jiminy Cricket that we all have in our head was telling me, don't do it, don't do, no lo hagas, no seas estupida, don't do it. But I don't listen to my voice because it reminds me of my mother. So I arrive in the salon and when I see the students, I realize that they all cut each other head because they look as if they were attacked by a battalion of parrots with dull machetes. Cha, cha, cha. Like some of them had eyebrows, some of them didn't. <laughs> and the only student who was available was Khadija, the Muslim girl who is wearing her veil. And she informs me that she started the school two or three weeks ago. And the voice is telling me, don't do it. Khadija is going to do a job on your head. But then my Canadian voice interrupts and, uh, and tells me, hey buddy, if you don't have your haircut with Khadija, people are going to think you're racist. Hey. You know, because Canadians don't want to be considered racist or rude. You're waiting for the elevator. The elevator door opens. Inside there is a guy with multiple tattoos on his face. One fresh tattoo on his neck that says, I murdered my mother this morning. But you go inside the elevator because you don't want to hurt his feelings. And that's how I went to sit in the chair of Khadija like a little lamb. And she asked me, welcome, welcome to the front row. And she asked me, what do you want me to do in your hair? And I said, well, you know, I am a comedian. Do something modern because I go out and I go tell jokes from town to town. <laughs> she understood, make me look like a clown. <laughs> and she cut my hair this short, this short she cut my hair in this big face, in this big, you know, I have gained so much weight. I, my face has become so big, I have to have two Facebooks. That's what we are at. <laughs> And a silent tear starts rolling down my cheek. And she says to me, did I do something wrong? And I still don't want to offend her. And I said, no, I am crying because I'm happy. <laughs> because I will be joining your religion. <laughs> Give me your veil, Khadija. Give me your veil. And that's how I spent nine months living as a Muslim woman. 